right, good morning everybody. Bean Chow's Garage and we're on day two of the wrap. So let's get to work. Because as always, Bean Chow's Garage is busy and always having fun. So let's get to work. Javi's wrap. So we've done the the hood, the roof, and the and the trunk. You guys can see the wrap came out pretty good. Uh, today, on day two, we're gonna do we're gonna do the quarter panel and the two doors. Now there is a catch to these guys because. The two doors, obviously, they're separate because you can see there's a seam to separate the two. However, the quarter panel, if you follow it, it's one solid piece. So we have to figure out how to cut one sheet of vinyl and cut out the doors, but have enough slack to... Um, to do the doors and the quarter panel and not make it look horrible. Uh, right now what Javi's doing is taking the door handle covers off. Um, every car is going to have a different procedure. Uh, this car, uh, in this, for the sake of time, we're not taking the handle completely off because the handles are actually really difficult to remove. So, yay Audi. So what we're doing is that we're taking the handles off, we're going to lay the vinyl over, and we're going to cut, trying to cut underneath so we can, not underneath, but further down so we can lay the vinyl underneath. Same with the covers, we're going to try to get it as tight as we can inside here and press all the vinyl in to make sure we can get a nice clean cover, um, cut and cover, uh, front and back. He's also taking the mirrors out, because we got to take the caps off so we can um, wrap the caps. Uh, the the tank cover it's gonna be pretty straightforward on that nothing difficult uh, the front and rear bumpers we're gonna try to do the bumper at least the rear bumper the front bumper I'm not 100% sure I can do that I actually have a friend that's gonna help me do that for me he actually wraps cars um, so we're gonna go there now the nothing the next thing you got though guys have to be worried about is this right here your trim He's actually going to keep the gold, uh, the co not the gold, copper, the chrome trim. So when you guys lay this, make sure we lay this tight and squeeze it in and then cut. When you guys cut, you want to cut kind of upwards and in. So the seam or the vinyl can actually get pushed in. So it looks really, really seamless and clean. Alright guys, let's get to work. So now that i got my fender laid down. Um, pretty simple, lay it down, cut it to the shape that your fender looks, but oversize everything so you can compensate for stretching and pulling, okay? So, you know you're going to have a fun time when you have curves, especially on a fender. Fenders are a little bit more complicated, but they're not as difficult as to do as like a hood or a, a roof. I think those are the hardest parts out of everything. I think uh, fenders, I can probably do a much better job than I can a roof or a, or anything in general on these cars. So pretty much I'm going from one side to the other. I'm going to work my way first this way, then work my way that way. Um, just remembering, you always gotta 
kind of pull one way, pull the other, so your lines look nice and clean. Not pulling correctly. Make sure to pull them correctly. Even things out. Yes, sir. Now fenders, you will waste more material than you are going to use, so I salvaged some of the material so we can do the mirror caps. That's why you see the cutout here. So I recommend you planning ahead when you do this, that way you can not waste as much material as possible because remember if you guys have a really big mess up you'll be able to use some of the material for fixing things which is a plus when you work on these and just remember just kind of ease it in don't go fast don't try to speed through this because then you'll ruin the vinyl or you'll stretch it too much or it just won't look right. We still got quite a ways to go down. Lines all clean. These vinyls not stretching the way I want it to, or the direction I want it to.
sometimes you can use your finger and it works a lot better than using the felt squeegee I'm almost down to the bottom of the fender on this side and you'll notice the difficulty I'm having because the curvature and the curving of the actual fender itself um, is making it a little bit more difficult than I would like it to be. Sometimes cutting off access material will uh, alleviate the stress of the material. It won't harm anything. Just make sure you leave a little lip so you can fold underneath. Got him? Yeah. All four? All four. Nice. Okay, so he just finished all four door handles and both caps. So I'm about halfway done with the fender. So we gotta just keep going. Now we're to the edge. So now we're here on this side. This is all done. So I can cut off pretty much this much right here. Because we're going to need to tuck this into the actual uh, fender. to the right side of the fender now. Now, trying to repeat the process over on one side to another, you need to pull the vinyl off, stretch it, pull it back, and then squeegee it down. And that's it, just repeat and do the other side as well. So now that we got the fenders done, he's finishing up the, uh, the trim and all that in there. So for
this portion of the DIY is where it becomes a little technical and more complicated. So, like I was mentioning before, the quarter panel is from here all the way over there is one piece. So, we want the vinyl to be oversized by probably two, three inches over here. And then same over here, we want to oversize it over this side of the quarter panel about two, three inches. Because what's going to happen is we're going to get the vinyl, lay it, and then we're going to cut out the shape um, of the quarter panel. But we're going to cut it out a little bit oversized. And then we're going to shimmy it back and then that will be your leftover material for the doors. Okay? Let's get to work. So we're going to need your magnets big time. Right before the beginning of the tire over here, okay?
little bit more. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. difficult this much material is to work with. Yeah, it's not ready for the tire. You need like two more inches. This way. Do you want to pull it then? Yeah. Cut this material onto the quarter panel, and then we'll roll up the quarter panel and leave that for last. And that way we can open the door. So I hate doing this part. I hate doing this part. Mess up.
not doing the filler.
have the door cut out. We're going to cut out one of the doors. And that way we can do one door at a time. Okay. So, see for the door is right here. Okay, myself. So, when we cut out the seam, let uh, this over about an inch. Voila! You got your extra material for the door, extra material for the other door. Done. That way there's no room for error. Have room for error, <laughs> and, but you'll have also extra material to get some done. My only concern now is the core panel when I overshot the cut. So. That was a pain in the ass <laughs> to, to cut it. So how much of a struggle we had cutting it. So now Action. I'm going to 
start my way up, down. We have to work our way down and then up. Um, See, what happens when you stretch it, it starts to pull in its own direction that it wants to pull into. And that's where become, vinyl becomes very difficult to work with after that. Usually you want this to happen towards the end, not at the beginning. And this is where it becomes a really, really big issue. Uh, so we got to keep pulling back. Oh, pull back. And then pull forward. Hold it. You gotta pull that up. This side up. There you go. See what? See where the line pulls? See that? Yeah. We don't want that to do that. You're gonna help me pull, dude.
sorry for being so quiet, but I gotta concentrate on this right here. This is a uh, one of the harder parts right here is like trying to get corners to make them look like corners. Leave this stuck over here. And we'll go up here. And we'll work our way down. Keep just repeating the process over and over and just shimmy it over till you're done. Stretch it like right, right there slowly, not too much, okay? Ready? Stretch that spot right there. A little bit, not too much. You're gonna change the color.
So much stretching. So we're gonna have to cut that, and then, but at least it, we salvaged it. So hopefully you guys saw that, because that is how you fix something when you didn't have enough material. But it looks like it didn't change color, because usually when you overstretch it, and I can show you guys an example here. When it overstretches, it'll turn right there. It'll turn like a red reddish white and that's when you know you overstress the material we kind of try to prevent that as best we could so another process you're gonna have to deal with it's really difficult is cutting and then with a steady hand literally just cut that line as clean as possible and work your way You want to cut the line as closest to the material uh, that's outwards versus inwards. That way it wraps around it. And then when you're done, so back to where we were, the battery just died. So. There's a seam here for the door, and there's chrome on here too. So you need to know where the seam and the chrome ends, and you need to cram into it. And you need to squeegee that in first. So you get the most amount of material inside that seam, so when you cut it, it will look like it's a part of the car, not just like a piece of tape on there. You'll see there. Uh, we got it in and then we're gonna cut on this side not this side and then that will let us push it in and it'll give us a clean cut on the inside now that we got the um, material pushing as best we could we're gonna cut right there and then we're gonna work our way following the line a slowly and clean as possible. So, like we showed you I do the quarter panel, now we're going to do the doors. Like I showed you, you got to overcompensate from over here. I did it by what? We did like about like four inches over here and like four inches on the other side. Um, because you're going to need that space to um, for the doors as well. Like that compensation adds up big time. So once you do that, you give, your, you give this side uh, some slack about two, three inches. Same with that side. Because what's going to happen, I'm going to cut this down the middle. And then you're going to have to slide this over to wrap it, and that's your compensation. Same with the other side. Once you cut this down the middle, we got to slide this over, and that's our compensation for uh, wrapping the doors. You got it? Alright, so, sorry we didn't show you the... Uh, 
the end results of the uh, the bumpers, but we failed multiple times trying to wrap the bumpers. So what we ended up doing is actually going to a shop called G-Spot G -Spot Auto Works, who wrapped our bumpers for us. We ended up paying about 500 bucks for the wrap job, which isn't bad for the front and rear bumpers. But one thing I'm going to tell you guys, when you go get your car wrapped and they quote you an obscure amount of money, that's a very fair price because it is a lot of work. It's so much work that I did not want to do this again. I'm probably never going to wrap another car. It's just really difficult, really annoying, and I think it requires certain type of patience to do this job. Um, so when someone gives you a price, you know, please look it over. Maybe shop around, but don't tell the guy that he's ripping you off because it's really not a rip off. For me, a whole roll of vinyl for that car was $500. So technically the shop is gonna probably quote you about a $1,500 labor cost, which I think is very, very fair. It's about two days of work um, for a shop. That's a lot of time. Um, so you have to really, really be conscious. So I have a huge new level of respect for people who wrap cars um, because it's a lot of work. Now, that being said, for that amount of money, I would probably recommend getting your car painted because it probably will end up being a better result and it lasts a lot longer. Vinyl usually has about a three to year life, uh, lifespan so it's hit or miss on how long it's going to last and also depends on where you live. Wait, wait, Papa, wait. So thanks again everybody for watching this episode of Pinch House Garage. Uh, here are now the before and after pictures. Bye. Say bye. What's that? Say bye. Bye.